breaking news. President Biden mishandled even more classified documents. A source confirms to Fox News aides have found at least one additional batch of top secret files at a location that is not his former office. Right now, we do not know what is in these documents or when they found them. The White House given the chance to come clean about this damning new discovery, but refused to comment. Has he uh, looked into whether any other documents have been taken to any other uh, his, any other office that he has, whether in Wilmington or Rehoboth? I'm just not going to speak to this. I'm going to uh, let the process continue. It's an ongoing process, and so I'm just not going to uh, to speak to this from here. It is more prudent and more appropriate for my colleagues at the White House Council. Joe finally breaking his two-day silence about the initial batch of classified information, claiming he has no clue how they ended up in his private office. People know I take classified uh, documents and classified information seriously. I was briefed about this discovery and surprised to learn that there were any government records that were taken there to that office. But I don't know what's in the documents. I've turned over the boxes. They've turned over the boxes to the archives. And we're cooperating fully, cooperating fully with the review. And don't expect any answers from the White House. The press secretary sidesteps every question. How could anyone be that irresponsible? It, isn't that what this president says about mishandling classified documents? The president spoke to this personally. How can President Biden be trusted moving forward with America's secrets? Because his lawyers, his team did the right thing. But he had a closet with he, classified information. His lawyers information did in it the that right thing. Again, again, again. Did he did, do he the was right surprised thing? that the records were there. He spoke to this. All right, Dana. The nothing to see here crowd who talked about. Eh, there's only 10, as mm -hmm. if one isn't enough to prosecute. Um, now we find additional uh, a box. We don't know how many documents are in that at a different location. How does this impact this investigation? investigation. So if I were in the White House press office, I'd be like, oh, I'm out. <laughs> I'm done here, guys. I mean, there's nothing I can do because I imagine that there's probably more. Right. I wouldn't be surprised. And it's possible that either the counsel's office or the chief of staff has said, all right, guys, everybody look in all the places, look anywhere, because let's say that it's two or three months down the road and they find another box and then there's another box. OK, so then you have a point of saying when you're irresponsible, that's what you said about the for other former president. Um, you have the fact also that the, they delayed in telling people that it that they that it had happened. And Ed O'Keefe is a reporter for CBS News. He's in the White House uh, press corps, he was really frustrated today by the stonewalling on the timing. Because, so, okay, you, fine, if you don't want to comment on the specifics of the documents or you want to refer to the counsel's office, which you know the counsel's office is not going to comment, so that's basically, like, again, saying a, no comment. But the, the fact that they had the information before the midterms, they held on to it, it only came out later in January. It's a legitimate question about communications. I don't think that one should be stonewalled, even if the answer is, you're right we should have told you earlier. That would be an answer. But she doesn't even have something like that. Now, you can argue that these two things are different, that this are classified documents, but this and but that. But you cannot argue that President Biden has uh, communicated it more effectively. And the phrase of, like, it's only bad when the other side does it, only goes so far. President Biden just got back to the White House. He walked by, by the press corps, didn't take any questions. But Mark my words, he's going to have to answer something about this, and he might not be able to read it off a card next time. Yeah, you mean the way he was just reading. All right, Jesse, you know, yesterday you talked about how, you know, the office at UPenn had some financing from China. I think that in addition to that, um, Jonathan Turley says that in order for documents to be removed, somebody has to request that they be removed for those documents to be in the one location and now two locations, and that Biden was working on a book on the Ukraine. <laughs> well, I'm sure it was ghostwritten. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Biden's doing. I do know if right now we have 10 documents and counting. At the end of this, he could have more 
classified documents out there than Donald Trump had at Mar-a-Lago. Right. I'm keeping a little tally here. It's funny that he was surprised to find that they had these documents in a closet. I'm sure he's going to be surprised when he finds out the Chinese wired his family $6 million. If you read the story, it said they discovered at least one additional batch. At least. So there's more coming. And now we know Biden aides could have been sifting through documents stored at locations. Yes. Joe only goes to Delaware. Where are these locations? So he's got the UPenn Center that the Chinese funded. The only other office I can think of was the place in Georgetown, you know, the place that Hunter got the key for him, and it was an office that he shared. There was a guy named Mr. Dong from China. Remember, Hunter was bringing strippers in there. Highly <laughs> secured place where Hunter brought strippers to have sex with. And how secure is this UPenn Center in the middle of Georgetown, a hop, skip, and a jump from the Chinese embassy? Did they have those, like, motion sensor laser beams that acrobats in James <laughs> Bond movies have to tumble over into closet? It's next to a steakhouse, Judge Janine. I, I don't think this place is Fort Knox. And why is he all of a sudden moving? Why is he cleaning out the UPenn Biden Center? Right? And wouldn't you send staff to do that? Why would you send a woman named Remus? Remus just happened to be the former White House counsel. She's not some low-level lawyer. She right. is the top campaign lawyer yep. for his campaign. She was the top White House counsel, used to work for Barack Obama. And then she leaves, and she all of a sudden discovers classified documents. I mean, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. You know, maybe Obama's trying to set Joe up, so he <laughs> takes the fall and Newsom goes in. But it's just funny how you can get also paid as a politician. So China can launder millions of dollars through UPenn to pay Joe? Joe was bringing in a, a million-dollar-a-year salary. That came from the Chinese. That came directly from the Chinese. Okay. All right. Jessica, I want you to listen to some sound that we have uh, from Joe in 2018, I believe. Look, here's my understanding, and I don't know. I don't have access to classified information anymore. I don't get briefed every morning by the agency. Okay, well, now we know that for six years he's had classified information, not in one location, but at least two locations, and that his administration, both the White House and the Department of Justice, made a decision on Mr. Transparency to not say anything until after the midterms, when they knew about it before the midterms. That's not fair. So I'll start with it. It's obviously not good that this happened. He shouldn't have had classified information. Uh, no one should be using the equivalency between what Trump had and what Biden had to justify the fact that he did it. It was wrong. And this is a very easy thing to own. I think Karine Jean-Pierre could have quite easily had that conversation and just said the president feels terrible about this. It was something that he was not aware of. He treats this very seriously and has over his 50-year career. We are cooperating, which is the central issue here. That is the difference. I mean, the number of documents, and we'll see, I don't think we're going to get as high as a Mar-a-Lago count, but if right now it's at 10 and Trump was 300 plus and 25 top secret, I don't think we're getting to those numbers. But just say even one is a problem. And I was on yesterday with um, former Congressman Doug Collins, and he made a really important point. I thought about how careers are destroyed for rank level military folks, right, that they they can't work again, dishonorable discharge, et cetera, if you mishandle classified information. That's how important this is, right, that we treat people that way. So that has to remain front and center. There's a narrative going around that the administration is getting off easy for this, certainly by the media. That's not true. CNN has been wall to wall on this to the point that it is exhausting liberals. <laughs> really, I don't want to see it anymore. We understand it's really bad. MSNBC is also talking about it constantly, talking about how this is something that has destroyed the merit of what he would have gotten, the bump from going to the border, anything that he's doing that is clouding. There was a border bump? Yeah. Who <laughs> said there was a bump? A border bump? No. What? Well, the, the polling has yet to come out. I just oh, mean oh, that yeah, the ability... Yeah, hope for bump. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. The fact that he went and did this thing that people have been asking him to, doing it, to do, and now everyone is talking about this. So it's no doubt bad, but I direct everyone. Karl Rove had his whiteboard up yesterday. He made a very clear case as to why Donald Trump, what he did, and what Biden did are very different. And the cooperation part of this is key. There would have been... No, no FBI agents showing up at Mar-a-Lago if they had complied with the subpoena and not stonewalled for months.
Well, now that we've found out, Greg, that uh, apparently the Biden administration hasn't been totally honest with us, Karine Jean-Pierre skipped Peter Ducey's question, which apparently was teed up possibly to suggest that someone had heard there may have been a second box. Isn't it time for them to go in, you know, guns a blazing into the House and find out what Joe Biden's got? Well, you know what I say, what's good for the goose? Good for the gander. I didn't say that. I never said that. <laughs> never said that? Never, I only say what's good for the goose. I've heard you say that. What is it with the Bidens leaving important stuff everywhere, right? <laughs> I mean, you got Hunter just leaving stripper babies and laptops all over the place. And a gun. Yeah, you got the, the gun. Daughter Haley leaving a gun in the trash can. You got, you know, you got the laptop. You got the diary, Ashley's diary in a halfway house. So you got... These are all really important things. Guns, diaries, laptops. And here's, you know, Joe's a regular Johnny Appleseed with classified information. <laughs> it doesn't... Look, I mean, look at this. Did you oh. see this? Are those an additional batch of yeah, classified those are oh. additional. Yes. Let's take a look, shall we? My we goodness, my there? goodness, I don't know. What are these pictures? Of a uh, of a book de depository in Texas. It's it's 1963, Dana. That's amazing. I know that's a, that looks like a young that. Joe Biden. Are you saying? I think it's possible. Oh, this is a bill from the Uyghurs <laughs> for hair implants. He's been getting his hair from the Uyghurs. Look, I, I you know I'm tired of being nice about this, you know, I like, because like when, when this thing came up under Trump, I knew that it was nothing. And maybe this is nothing, too. But you got to go back. And Jessica, yeah. it was worse. It was a hundred times worse when this came out about Trump. It was, it was, you had a historian suggesting executing Trump. Yep. You had, I think it was Michael Hayden, who actually retweeted that and said, I concur or something like that. So I think that it's, it, you know, I'm going all in now. I'm saying... Execution? That, no, I'm not going to say execution. Not yet. I'm going to wait for the facts to come out. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think that right now, it's safe to say that right now, this is perhaps the worst thing that's happened since the Civil War. Mm -hmm. It's worse than 9-11. It's worse than the Civil War and the Red Hot Chili Peppers yeah. <laughs> combined. And perhaps... Do we have a constitutional crisis? We have a constitutional crisis right now. But see, the thing is, we aren't like that. I can't even pull that off. Right, yeah. It's no, a, it's we a, aren't it, like that. We aren't that. like that. We're no. just better people, It would be Jessica. so <laughs> easy to call him a threat to democracy, Mr. 10% <laughs> yeah. and all that, but we're just going to keep moving. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.